All right. Well, this evening, as I've already mentioned, we're right. going to well, continue in the section we were reading this morning. So let me read the text, verses 41 through 48. Verses 41 through 48. And um, and we'll take a look at it. Uh, I, I just want to we'll say, look at it, um, as we I come to this, I think that this um, is probably this, one of the clearest passages that tells us that there are degrees of punishment in hell. Punishment. I believe there are degrees hell. of reward in heaven. We I were talking about that as well, and we'll talk a little bit more about that this evening. But not everyone will be punished in exactly the same degree Exactly in hell, and actually, it may even get hell, worse than that. So, uh, those of you who have been here for a while know what that means, but others will have to wait. See, so Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 41. Okay, and this again is following on what Jesus has already said about being ready. Peter said, Lord, are you addressing this parable to us or to everyone else as well? Or to everyone else and the Lord well. said, who then is and the, the faithful, said, and then is faithful and sensible steward whom his master steward, will put in charge of his servants his master will put in to give them their rations at the proper time? Blessed is that Blessed slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But if, his possessions. but if that slave says in his heart, my master will be a long time in coming, my master will be a long begins to beat the slaves, both men and women, to beat the slaves and to, and, and, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that slave will come on a day when he does not that slave expect will come on a day when he And at an hour he does not know. And at an hour and will cut him know. in pieces. And will cut him in and pieces. assign him a place with and the assign unbelievers. Him a place with and that slave who knew his master's and will and did not get ready or act in accord with his will will receive many lashes. Will receive many but the one lashes. who did not know it and but committed deeds worthy of a flogging will receive a few. From everyone who has from everyone been given much, much will be required, much, much and to whom they entrusted much, and to whom of they him much, they will ask him, all the more. They will ask all the more. I do think that this parable is directed primarily to those, directed those who would follow Jesus, those who would those profess who faith in him, because it does talk about stewards and servants and the household, faithful servants, unfaithful servants, and Punishments based upon and, what um, one knows or doesn't know, know. but still there's a know. sense in which it applies still there's to everyone, applies because everyone's going to be judged according to knowledge and according to what they've done. Well, this morning, remember, that well, uh, we, morning, saw remember, that, uh, we saw Jesus that telling the crowds that they needed to be ready, that uh, ready for his coming, ready, uh, which could mean, as we've seen, the second coming, when he comes to judge the world. He He's coming in 70 A.D. to judge the Jews for their crucifying of, the of their Messiah, their crucifying of or their His Messiah. coming for them at or death. His coming for them at if death. they were ready, Jesus said they if would they be were blessed. Ready, Jesus said they would now be we do blessed. know that those who were ready in 70 now A.D. Were, were certainly blessed by escaping the worst thing that has ever happened or ever will happen to any people in the history of the world. Those were Jesus' own words. Those were regarding Jesus what was going to happen to the Jews, and that was God's judgment upon the Jews for crucifying His Son. Again, I would just refer you to uh, Josephus' War of the Jews um, to see just how horrible these things actually were. Now, we need to understand that just because God works the greatest good that He has ever worked, Good which is saving ever all worked, of his people from hell, which is saving all of his through from the greatest hell. act of evil through ever committed, which was the Jews crucifying and killing, you know, condemning and crucifying his, his son, crucifying it doesn't mean son, that what they did was a good. It wasn't they good. Did was good. It their, wasn't crimes good. Demanded their crimes demanded justice, and God gave it to them, and it was a blessing to those Christians who were aware that this was coming to escape it. In the same way, if the disciples were ready for his coming to death, they would also be blessed. Death, they would also and we will as well, and uh, we whether he comes well, for us at death or at the second uh, coming, comes for us a death Jesus will welcome coming. us into his kingdom. Jesus will welcome us he will kingdom. acquit us, declare he us not guilty us, on the day of his judgment, us not guilty on the day of and his he judgment. will sustain us and care and for us, provide for us, and bless us, us provide for uh, throughout us all eternity. Us. In the new heavens and the new earth where we actually the get to live with him. To live now, Jesus continues this theme this now, evening by telling us how we can be ready. 
we can um, be ready. Beyond, you know, simply trusting um, in the Lord beyond, Jesus Christ, there are the things that we need to do. And he also gives us incentives in order to pay attention to what we should be doing to get ready, the encouragement of rewards and the threat of punishments. And again, let me just say at the outset, uh, again, we, we need to remember the that uh, the punishments that are threatened, the warnings in Scripture, are actually directed toward the churches. I mean, everything that's written in the Bible, for the most part, is written to the churches. There are people in the churches that don't know the Lord. They need to be warned. But there are also true believers, obviously. True believers, who obviously, will benefit from those warnings will benefit as, you know, by warnings. striking fear in their hearts as and not wanting this to fall on them. It will move them in the right direction. So we need to understand even the warnings, even the threatenings are meant for our good to keep us going in the direction the Lord would have us to go. So the first question we want to ask is, how does this help us or tell us or show us how we can be ready for our Lord's coming? whether For it be in, in one of those two ways. Well, we first need to ask the question, to whom well, we first need to ask the was question, Jesus speaking was Jesus when speaking? he said that they needed to when be ready? He said that they needed to be uh, this ready. was something about which uh, Peter uh, was, was a bit unclear. Which, uh, Peter and so he asked unclear. Jesus in verse 41, so Lord, asked Jesus in verse 41, are you addressing Lord, this parable to us or to, or to everyone else as well? Is this exclusively meant for us or for everyone who follows you? Now, it's interesting that Jesus doesn't actually answer that question, does he? But he rather replies with the question in verse 42. And the Lord said, who and then the is the faithful said, and sensible steward who the whom his master will put in charge of his servants to give them their rations at the proper time? I think from this answer of this question, which is his answer, I think our Lord intends this mainly to be for his apostles because they were the ones who were the stewards who were given the charge to give the rations to the servants at the proper time. Okay, they were the, the stewards that he was putting in they charge, the basically, of his household in charge basically of to his give household. to other believers to give to the other truth believers. of his word. They were to the be the teachers. Remember, they were part of the cornerstone, well, part of the foundation for the church. Now, I think it's also applied to these now, others as well. I think it's also well. applied to these others To well. all who would follow him, and I think that's to the implication of what Jesus is saying, because this... Stewardship because would also be one day entrusted to them one day to one degree to or another to in order to carry the work forward. Remember, the apostles weren't going to be around forever. Uh, somebody else had to do this work that they uh, were doing, and that would be successfully or successively passed on from generation to generation, which means that, that through all this uh, process of being passed down, it eventually comes to us and includes us to one degree or another. We all need to be ready, of course, for His coming if we are to receive His blessing. But what does it mean to be dressed with readiness, to, be dressed to have our lamps lit, to, have to be waiting lit, and watching for the return of the and Master. For the return well, certainly of the means master. to be trusting Him, well, certainly turning means from our sins, but it also means to be faithful, to be faithful in doing the particular responsibility that the Lord has entrusted to us the Lord has entrusted in His to household. Us in his house. Now again, the apostles were being groomed by now Jesus again, to take on the full responsibility of his earthly kingdom after he had ascended. It would be up to them to carry on the work, which would include evangelism, right? Telling others what he had done and how they could be saved by trusting him. It was their responsibility to teach the disciples the truth and to train them in godly living, right? To learn how to live like Jesus Christ and to send them into the fields once they're trained to continue the work. Uh, not the only work. while they were living, but uh, even after they, they had living, died, to carry on that work. And as I've said, that work, that process, has continued that down, work, to that process continued down to the present and day. Now and now it belongs to us. And now it okay, belongs not just, of course, to us, but through the entire not church. Just, course, the us, the entire now, church. The, the point is that Jesus now, has given the, to each of us part of the responsibility. None of us, thankfully, bears the whole. How would you like to be responsible for discipling all the nations yourself? The Lord has distributed this responsibility to each member of his church and he has given to each of us at least one gift that we can use towards completing this work 
towards right. completing this work. Paul writes to the Romans in Romans 12, Paul verses 4 through 6. For just as we have many members in one body, many members in and one all body, the members do not have the same function, the the so same we function, who are many are one body so in Christ and indivi one individually members one of another, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. The Lord has given to us gift according to the grace He's given to each of us, right? And that gift could be one of, of a number of things. Evangelism, right? The ability to communicate Christ, to, to bring up the gospel in a conversation, to encourage people to come to Jesus. There are people who are gifted to do that better than others. The gift of service. Right the to gift of service, to do work, right? not to, not just you know the, work, like moving not, physical not just, things you know, around, but like serving one another around, and, and helping one another in various and areas. In and various that service areas. could mean you know several different things. Certainly could mean encouragement. Could mean admonition, exhortation. Could mean admonition, exhortation. Uh, but you but, know encouragement can include a lot of different things. But service and really the church needs servants. We're all called to serve in one capacity or another. Giving is another. Teaching is another. Preaching, teaching, leading, preaching, governing, leading, showing mercy, governing, showing encouragement. Mercy. I've already mentioned. Encouragement. And it doesn't have to be mentioned. just one. It could be more it than one. It could be a combination of several of these. But whatever the gift is, we need to be using it. Is. We need to, to complete this work, right? To complete this work. To be building right? one another up as to be well. Building one another up so that each well, of us can better so do each of us can what the Lord has called us to do collectively. Think about what Paul writes in First Corinthians twelve verses four through seven. Now there are varieties of gifts. Now there are varieties of gifts. But the and there are varieties of ministries and, there are and the same Lord. Of ministries and there the same are varieties Lord. of effects, there are but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Okay. So the first thing we need to bear in mind is if we're going to be ready for the Lord's ready coming, for the we need Lord's to be trusting coming. in Jesus, we need we to be need turning to from our sins, Jesus. we need to be we following Him, but we also need to be playing our role, need to be you know, doing our, our part role. in the work yeah, of the kingdom of heaven, taking the gift the Lord has given to us, the particular responsibility that He has entrusted to us, and being faithful in that calling. When the Lord comes for us, we want to be doing it. We what he has actually doing. made us what he has to do. Made okay. us to do. Now, secondly, let's look at the incentives now, secondly, that Jesus let's look at the gives, incentives beginning Jesus with the encouragement gives, of reward, because that's where Jesus begins. That's where Jesus we know begins. that our Lord Jesus never calls any of us to serve at our own expense. There's always a reward expense. attached to it. There's we know that the, things that we, we know things that we do don't deserve the reward. You know, these are rewards of grace, but they are yeah, still rewards, rewards and they are incentives. Still rewards, if we are faithful with what he has given us to do, when he comes for us, he says when he comes that, us, he will he says that he will reward us. And I think rewards are primarily given out on the day of judgment, but I still think that even while we're in heaven, there will be uh, there yeah, will that be sense of the, uh, the greater capacity uh, to the love the Lord and to, to uh, enjoy, you know, uh, the, the joy, uh, basic you know, blessings the, of heaven the, uh, that we've talked about before. But Jesus says in verses 43 and 44, blessed is that slave whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Again, when, when he comes, you know, we, we want to be faithfully doing what he's called us to do. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. I think the idea here is, I think he will give us the kingdom. Remember, Jesus is the one who earns the kingdom, and he is the one who gives us the kingdom, and all who serve him will inherit it with him. So here is a positive incentive, the reward for faithfulness. Faithfulness, I think we understand, is a virtue. I think we understand a it's virtue, a virtue that is everywhere commended in the scriptures. The word means to be trustworthy. The word means to be trustworthy. reliable, to, be reliable. To, carry to carry through with what the Lord gives us to do, whether that thing be small or whether it be more important or whether it be more consistently and conscientiously. And what, Jesus what Jesus says regarding our faithfulness in small things. In Luke 16, verse 10, 
in Luke 16. He who is faithful in a very little he thing is faithful, is faithful also in much. Thing is faithful also and he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. This is telling us that if we want to be entrusted with more, we need to be faithful, with, more, with, faithful now. with what the Lord has given us to do. Now, we read now. this morning, remember, the parable now, of the talents, morning, and, the and we saw in that talents, particular parable that faithfulness is rewarded. Is uh, each rewarded. of the servants was entrusted uh, with talents, the remember, entrusted resources, with talents, remember, which, um, resources, which, you know, we, we try to kind which, of figure um, out in the parable kind of what exactly the parable, are those talents. Exactly Perhaps we should see them talents. as Perhaps responsibilities, them as opportunities as to serve the Lord, uh, serve and that they were entrusted uh, to them according to their, to their particular abilities. And perhaps we should see that as and the gifts we see that, as that the Lord gifts. has given that the to Lord them has or given, given to us. To them. And those gifts, you know, are, are two different and kinds. Gifts, There's you know, natural gifts. Some people have gifts. more energy, some less. Some, some have more, uh, energy, some you know, more intelligence, some less, and so forth. But there are also spiritual gifts that we were talking about. That we were so that about. nobody in so that among the servants was actually given something to do that was beyond their ability to do. It was given to them according to their ability. Each of them was told to use those resources that were given to make more to for his master, which is in terms of for his monetary master, terms, in terms, right? Of talent monetary terms, to make more talent. Talent, talent was money, to make, make more money. Talent. Okay, talent but I think money, in this case, okay, representing the faithful case, use of the gifts and the opportunities to build up the kingdom, to move it forward, to make a profit for our Lord. For and then, of course, when our Lord returns, then, of course, when our or the Lord Master returns, returns after going on a very long journey, after going okay, on a very which long indicated journey, there would be some space of time which indicated there would be between the time he gives them this, between the time you know, this responsibility, this, this charge, you know, this these talents, and the time he calls them to account. And the time each one was rewarded account. according each one was to rewarded their faithfulness. To their the one with the five talents made five more. The one with two made two more. And we're going to set aside the one that had the one, at least for now. So they were rewarded. They were rewarded with the money they actually the, made. Okay. The money so they, they got that made, as a reward. Okay. They were rewarded so with greater reward. honor. They were rewarded okay. with greater uh, honor. You've been faithful in a little. Okay. I will put uh, you in charge over much. And they were brought into they were the joy into of their Lord. Faithfulness of their brought Lord. about Faithfulness uh, reward. About. Okay. Uh, reward. Now, notice okay. that the parable now, implies that, the parable that implies there are differing levels of reward that there are differing levels based upon reward. giftedness, based upon, based upon giftedness, faithfulness, based upon with, faithfulness the responsibilities. with the responsibilities. Now, both of these things, the gifts, the now, abilities, as well as the opportunities, the responsibilities are sovereignly given by God. Given by Which reminds God. us that God's sovereign in this area is, he is in every God other area, area, right? Uh, God sovereignly uh, basically plans ahead of time basically plans to use some of his people more than others from the beginning to, from the beginning give, them to give them greater, so greater gifts so that they can take on greater responsibilities. So I, I think we have to argue that, don't we? Because who among us would say that the Apostle Paul... That the or Augustine Paul, that we've been looking at uh, on Wednesday evenings, at, uh, on Wednesday evenings, or Calvin, or Luther, or perhaps or Luther, some of our you know more perhaps favorite our, uh, you know, individual Spurgeon, favorite, uh, or Bunyan, Spurgeon, or Jonathan or Edwards, Bunyan, who would argue that they were not Edwards, extraordinarily gifted by the Lord and able to do more and able than any of us can do. If you've ever tried to do what they could do, I think you'll see quite quickly that you just can't choose to do that because it's not within your, your set of gifts or abilities, certainly not within, within mine. So their greater gifts enable them to take a greater responsibility that eventually would end in a greater reward. The one, one received five talents, one received two, one received one according to their ability and what they were able to make was as limited, you know, basically limited the one who who had the two did not make the five. He only had made two. The one who had five made five. So basically, so their abilities enable them to make more than the others. So their greater gifts enable them to take so greater, greater responsibility that ended in greater reward. But it's also true, notice, that their gifts wouldn't have brought any reward. Wouldn't have brought any if they weren't faithfully using those gifts. If they weren't faithfully there have using been those people gifts. who have been tremendously have been gifted who have been tremendously in the history of the gifted. world with natural gifts in the history of the world with who never trusted gifts. Jesus. 
who never who loved never trusted him, Jesus, never used them for God's glory. So never used them they're going to end up so basically in the group that gets cut in pieces that's going to have to suffer for eternity. No reward, but only no punishment. Reward, there has to be only the faithful has to be use faithful of these gifts in order to get gifts in the order reward. To get and these the reward. did that, at least the first and two. These did that, at least the first they two. took what the Lord gave them. They took what used the Lord it faithfully, them. used it consistently used for it his faithfully, used it glory. Consistently for his now, glory. think about how we might apply this. Now, we, we, can't how we, might apply this. We, we can't change how the Lord made us. How the Lord made us. I've tried. <laughs> You've tried. I've it's tried. impossible. We can't go <laughs> beyond our, our giftedness, right? Our, our giftedness, that is sovereignly right? in the Lord's that hands. That is sovereignly in the Lord's but hands. But there is an area we can change. But there of is these an area two. we can change. Okay. We can two. grow in okay. faithfulness. We can grow in and faithfulness. And that's what we need to do. We can't change and that's what we, what we are. Need to do. We can't but we can change the way we live we by God's grace. So how do we go about doing that? So how do we go about doing that? Love. Well, again, we need to cultivate love, love for the Lord. We need, we need to, to grow in our love for the Lord because the more we love Him, the more we're going to want to serve Him faithfully. The more we will serve Him faithfully. The way we grow in love is by spending time with Him, right? Thinking about Him, meditating on Him, being in His Word, having communion with Him, in His Word and in prayer, listening to the Lord as He speaks to us in His Word, and then taking what we hear and then taking and consistently what we hear, applying and consistently that to our lives, living as he calls us to live. So the more faithful we are here, the more faithful we are, the more we're going to be rewarded in heaven. And let me just heaven. mention this too, because I've mentioned this before. And let me just mention this too, mentioned this before. Um, it, is um, that, um, it is believed that, perhaps, believed not, that, by um, all, perhaps not by all, but certainly by some, that, certainly by some, that these, rewards that some, these rewards that we start off with really only determine the beginning, but not the end. Remember but that blessedness end. really has Remember to do with blessedness really seeing, the seeing the Lord's glory, seeing the learning Lord's more glory. about Him, learning spending more about time in His presence, and blessedness it doesn't just you know sort of hit the peak just, and then just you know, stay there, but it, it continues to grow and grow throughout all eternity. So there's a very real sense in which our blessedness, which is the reward, will continue to grow throughout all eternity as we behold the face of the Lord. Behold see his glory and learn more of see him. His glory now that's going to be important because of what we're going to see also in the other group. In the and here we move group. to the negative incentives and here we move to the where Jesus warns what will happen Jesus if will we happen are not if faithful, we are not which means if we are faithful, not ready. We've already seen this morning not ready, what happens if we're not ready. And certainly that ready. third individual in the parable that of the talents who received the one who took it and buried it and then gave the one talent back to his master. We know what happens when you're unfaithful. Take the talent unfaithful. from him and cast him into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I've already told you what the negative incentives are, how they're useful to us as warnings. We do need to think of a couple of different things here. Jesus obviously is not telling us that... That, um, uh, he's going to condemn us uh, if we're not faithful going to in, in one sense. In, because in one sense. if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're safe. And we're Christ, never going to be condemned. Safe. But if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be faithful to one degree or another. Uh, Jesus or is not telling us here Jesus is not telling that our us salvation here depends on our faithfulness as a work that we do in order to justify ourselves before God. That would be to turn the gospel or actually destroy the gospel and to come under the curse, as Paul tells us, in Galatians chapter 3. Three. In okay, so we don't want to see this three. as a work okay, so we, we do don't want to, see this to be saved, but rather as an evidence. Saved, rather as our an faithfulness evidence. shows our, our justification. Shows our justification. If we love the Lord, if we, love we the Lord, will strive to be faithful. We will strive as I mentioned before. To be faithful. How do we grow in faithfulness? How do we grow in love? Faithfulness. But if we don't love the Lord, but if we don't love, we the won't Lord, be faithful. We so what is it that he warns? So what is it that he for warns for unfaithfulness? What is the penalty for this unfaithfulness? Penalty for this slash unbelief? Because that's ultimately what it is. Because that's ultimately well. First of all, it's punishment in hell. Okay, that's where unbelievers go when the Lord comes for them at death. 
when the Lord comes he from sends them into hell, and I believe that's what he, he has in, in mind here. I that's what he has in, in, in verses mind 45 here. and 46. In verses 45 and 46. But if that slave says in his heart, but if that my master will be a long time in coming, my master will be a long and begins to beat the slaves, both men and women, to eat and drink and get drunk. To eat and drink. The master of that slave will come on a day when he does not expect him, and an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces. And assign, and assign him a place with the unbelievers. And by the way, um, with the unbelievers. By the cutting way, in uh, pieces, apparently that was not uncommon in, in, in the ancient Near East. It was a penalty Near for penalty unfaithfulness. For so a common image they'd be so familiar with. A common image they'd be now, in the context of 70 AD, now, was Jesus referring to the AD, suffering that one would have to endure inside the city? Maybe, but it does seem more severe than that, doesn't it? In the context of death or of the second coming, or of the this certainly coming. has to refer this certainly to, has hell. to refer. To now, hell. if we think that Jesus isn't coming now, if soon, if we neglect our responsibilities, if we, even worse, begin to take advantage of our brothers and sisters in the Lord and live an immoral life, what does that say about us? What does that say it says that us? we don't know him. It says that because we if we know, know him, him, we will love him and because we'll seek to be faithful him, to him. It doesn't mean you know, that a true believer can't fall into sin for a while and perhaps behave that way, but if that is the pattern of our lives, it shows that we do not know him. John says in 1 John 3 that anyone who practices sin is not born of God. Okay. Is not born so we do need to, to pay attention so to, to, that, to, warning. Pay attention to okay. that warning. It shows we don't know okay. him, and then it shows he will we come when we're not expecting him. He will come when we're not like expecting the five him. foolish virgins, like the five foolish virgins, and will throw us into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. By the way, the fact that it's dark does not mean there isn't fire there. This is hell. It's being referred to here. It's not some other place. The fiery hell. The now, fiery hell. that's the first warning. The now, second warning that's is the first warning. of the differing, degrees, is of of differing degrees of in hell. punishment in hell. I mean, in being in hell, we would say, I mean, certainly is more than anyone could ever possibly endure. Being there is the worst thing we could possibly imagine. But Jesus tells us here that hell is going to be worse for some than it's going to be for others. Not everyone is going to receive the same punishment in the same way that the righteous are going to have differing levels of reward based on their faithfulness. The wicked are going to be punished based upon how faithless they actually were. Now, I think we, we can all see the justice we, in this, we right? Can all see the justice because, in this, um, again, because um, uh, again, should the Lord uh, should punish, the Lord let's say, a, a person punish, let's say, who, a, a person um, though he doesn't believe in the who, Lord Jesus, um, and so he's he going to end up in hell, in Jesus, and so he's basically, in hell. by the common grace of God, lived a decent life. Okay? He was faithful to his spouse. He was faithful to his children. and. He was a good neighbor to those around him. He was a good neighbor Should to those that man him? be punished to the same Should degree as, as Hitler? The same degree okay. as Hitler, who was responsible for Hitler, the deaths of what? Countless Jews, of what? Countless Americans, Jews. others within the Allies, Americans, as well as Germans, the Allies, as Russians, well as Russians, and then trillions of dollars of property and then damage. Trillions okay. of dollars of property uh, Hitler did damage, a lot of damage. Are the two uh, going to be treated in the same way? Jesus tells us that each will be punished that each will according be punished to what they've done. According okay? to what they've done. Uh, every okay. careless uh, word every that, we, that, that careless an unbeliever word speaks that we, that will be brought up against him in the day of judgment. Will all will be weighed in the balances and justice will be meted out. Remember, justice means that uh, you get this for that. You do more of this, you get more of that. But Jesus also tells us in this parable that there is something else that needs to be weighed in the balances. And that is how much they knew. Again, think about this in the context of the church. And people who are in the church who hear the truth who week the after week, who the truth but week don't after week, you know, but respond don't, to that truth, don't get ready, don't, don't do what the Lord calls them to do, there's a warning against that. There's, the more there's knowledge, knowledge you have, the worse it's going to be, verses 47 and 48. And that slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready or act in accord with his will will receive many lashes. Maybe maybe this is referring to the one in the church under the preaching of the word, but the one who did not know it, it'd be hard to conceive of somebody in the church who doesn't know what Jesus wants, but I suppose it's possible, wants, and committed possible. deeds worthy of a flogging, will receive, will receive but few. 
few. From everyone who has been given much, much will be required, and to whom they entrusted much, of him they will ask all the more. Remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said about the cities in which he did most of his miracles and teachings? Woe to you, Capernaum. If Tyre and Sidon had, if this, if this had occurred in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented. If, if I had done this ministry in Sodom, they would have repented. It's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah, for Tyre and Sidon than for you, Capernaum. Because of all the light that you have because been given. That That's exactly what our Lord is talking about here. With greater knowledge comes greater responsibility. And of course, if we add it to that, and of course, if we add it to that, that hell is also like heaven in the that sense that what like uh, one, does one does in this life, in this world, only determines what level one begins to suffer. And that that suffering would increase that that to all eternity to all as that person continues to person hate God continues to hate and blaspheme God in hell. And blaspheme God I mean, what makes us hell. think that if, I mean, if one is punished according to the sins that they commit in this world, who's to say they're not going to be punished for the sins they commit in hell? I mean, it's still a sin to, to hate God. I mean, it's still a sin to, to blaspheme God. God. Uh, that, gives uh, that gives a very powerful incentive not to end up there. I mean, imagine hell I mean, is, imagine hell if we conceive it correctly, is, is, is unimaginably painful. But to think painful. that that pain increases but to think that that throughout, pain all, increases eternity, throughout um, all eternity is, is um, kind of, it's like contemplating infinity. It just, it's hard to imagine. It, it just, it's hard uh, but to certainly, imagine. we know uh, enough about it not to want to be there. So we need to make sure we need that to make we're sure. trusting in Jesus. We need to make that sure trusting in Jesus. that we, we are sure serving Him. That we are May the Lord then him. help us to be faithful. May the Lord then help what us. What was Jesus' be purpose behind get, saying what the things Jesus that He did? Was he, wanting to, he, did? Was he, wanting, to no, he was wanting to browbeat His disciples? Was He wanting to browbeat His disciples? No, he was wanting the people who were around Him, who weren't converted, Judas included. I mean, still meant for Him as well. But for those who maybe had hopes, but for those who maybe to be able to analyze those hopes in light of the evidence, do you really know Him? If you, you really do, know him, then you, you do, will be faithful. And our Lord tells us the same thing this evening. If we know him, we will be faithful. If we know him, we will be to faithful. use the gifts that he's given to us, to, use the gifts to do the work that he's called us to do, to so do that we will be ready to, to meet him when he comes for us and receive his gracious rewards. Oh, may the Lord um, apply his word to us as we need to hear it. Let's bow for a moment of prayer.